My name is Gary Scammon. I'm the Chief Executive of Future Asset Management International. We're an Australian boutique fund manager. Well, I think there are a number of ones. Um, we specialise in the hotel market and we run a fund for Best Westman, which is the largest hotel group in the world. And uh, we run property funds and income funds basically out of Australia. So we would argue strongly that you should invest into a stable market that's well regulated, particularly if you've come from a market that's had very rapid growth and wealth creation and perhaps not enough regulation, then what we offer is the stability of a very stable AAA market uh, with very high quality clients. So as a boutique fund manager, we offer the world's biggest hotel group as your tenant effectively, so um, as one option within asset management, so it's property based, which is we think is stable and of course has a fantastic tenant. And secondly, we offer an income fund with a very major property developer and in all cases, the funds that we offer are capital guaranteed. We think that's really important. So as a quick summary, I would say it needs to have an asset base, essentially property, needs to provide regular income, and it needs to provide the opportunity of capital growth. I think that if an investment manager is about a relationship. So of course, it's based on trust. Everybody says that, of course. Because we're a boutique independent, we don't think that dealing directly with a big institution is the solution because institutions tend to only want to use their products, whereas as an independent we've got the ability to look at all products. We think that's really important. So I would say the most important things are the person. Do you get on with them? It's no different to life, choosing your fund managers, like choosing your friends. And so it's based on trust, it's based on chemistry, it's based on credibility of the person and I suppose a track record. But of course even great fund managers start somewhere. Um, so it's about a relationship because it has to be very personal because what you really want is a fund manager to take responsibility and really run it as though it's their own money. And if you can achieve that, I believe that's the best way to choose a fund manager. Well, I think that depends, obviously, on everybody's different. And so asset allocation varies and, of course, the standard one would be about 30% into properties, about 30% into income. It really depends, I suppose, on what the person's trying to achieve. In our case, what we're really clear on is that we don't believe that our role is to create wealth for people. I don't believe that's a fund manager's role. We think that our role is to create and protect assets and create diversification. Because the truth of it is that any wealthy person or any major person who's created wealth doesn't need someone else to teach them how to do that. Potentially what we can help them do, not teach, but help them do, is protect their assets to diversify their assets, perhaps in a, in a more stable country, perhaps than where they've made their money. And of course, to create generational wealth for the next generation, perhaps by offering lifestyle to their children or perhaps education in another country. And those would be all criteria about how we believe you can make a difference. Well, I think there's a lot of risks, of course. And as you diversify, it's hard enough initially running and building your wealth in your own country where you understand your own culture and your language and all the risks that go with that. And of course, as you start globalizing and going to other countries, there's always other types of risks. And I suppose a fund manager's role within that in a foreign country in particular is to make you aware of the risks. And of course, all good investment decisions start with understanding the risk. So I think to mitigate the risk would really be to go into countries potentially that are very stable and secure. And of course they're easy to see and the global financial crisis was a really good example because it started to show the countries that were stable and could provide you with stability. So I think the secret potentially is, is to choose countries that are extremely stable if you're globalizing and rather take the risks in your home country where you understand your own culture and your own workings and all the little nuances that every culture and country has.